can you see my slides yes sir yeah so we'll start up with a new topic uh, today that is some of the fundamentals of hydrology thereafter remote sensing measurements of hydrological variables then we'll be seeing the remote sensing applicable applications in the field of hydrology and hydrological model one model will be taking up for a hydrological modeling that is known as sac hydro that is a model developed by space application center amdavad so will be so as we already know ki uh, what is hydrological cycle what are the different elements and different units that we have to be acting and you those parameters will be acting for the uh, as a key element in the water cycle so as we have already discussed so i'll be not going into much detail into that we also we have covered the topic like watersheds what do you mean by watershed what do you mean by stream order what do you mean by stream number what do you mean by bifurcation ratio what do you mean by elongation ratio what do you mean by various other uh, stream networks so we'll be not going into much detail but just uh, it's a revision of the earlier uh, topics and then we'll continue with a new topic then you have already we have seen in various satellite images ki how the movement of water is within a catchment what do you mean by catchment what do you mean by sub catchment what do you mean by basins what do you mean by watershed what do you mean by sub watershed what do you mean by macro watershed this all topics uh, the flow direction we have already completed so it just kind of a uh, what i can say a uh, revision and then parallelly we are continuing it with a new topic then runoff generation processes that we have seen ki how the runoff is generated what are the various operations that are being performed in the on the earth surface like infiltration we have done we have done with the inflow then what do you mean by infiltration then percolation what is known as zone of unsaturated zone then what is zone of saturated zone what do you mean by water table what do you mean by base flow what do you mean by overland flow what do you mean by precipitation transpiration so each and every this all parameters has to be taken into consideration whenever you are trying to model the water table or water cycle or any kinds of hydro cycle if you want to model it you have to identify each and every parameter so as to know the proper understanding of the area the proper availability of the area the proper runoff of the area and proper recharge so overland flow if you can say that is more properly known as runoff okay so we have already uh, done this how this runoff is generated and finally uh, we have been seeing that how different kinds of overland flow we are talking about so there are two kinds of uh, formulas or two kinds of definition that will become that is known as saturation overland flow and hortonian overland flow both come from the storm precipitation where in one hand you will be finding overland flow or on the other hand channel precipitation plus overland flow plus subsurface storm flow and here you will be finding inflow plus we'll be seeing the soil metal storage base flow to produce a basing hydrogram so hill slope runoff generation it's nearly the same as we have already started but some of the features are different so what are those features you can see that at the top circle a b c there can be a soil profile on the top soil if you go to the sub surface below the earth, the next section is zone of percolation where all this water that percolates will be moving downwards and finally the ground water where you can find the underground water table and then you form the stream apart from that uh, if you go to the water cycle then you have got precipitation then you have got transpiration then you have got uh, moisture extraction from, from plants that are known as transpiration unsaturated flow by matrix saturated which of the soil so this all overland flow in flow we have already covered this topic so whenever you are talking about uh, uh, 
the movement of underground water you have to always think about the movement that is actually happening in the nature and the same feature has to be modeled using satellite remote sensing so till now we have just revised the all the earlier topics that we have already covered in our earlier le lectures now we'll be going into uh, some remote sensing applications where the altimeters uh, the microwave set uh, data sets or the remote sensing data sets are used to detect that data to capture the data to map the data and then we can create a different kinds of uh, profiling along the various banks dams reservoirs using remote sensing satellite data sets so here you can see that using the satellite data uh, altica track uh, 367927 we are trying to measure the water sector drift spread over various discharge patterns so using satellite altimeters nowadays the satellite altimeters detects flood waves in gosi brahmaputra rivers and this all features microwave instruments use uh, sar and altimeters provide valuable information on the water spread and water level even during the extreme weather condition so using generally if you are using the optical remote sensing uh, that doesn't have the penetration capability but when you are using the microwave satellite data sets that have got all weather uh, working capacity they can penetrate the water droplets water particles so this microwave data having altimeter sensor has capable of uh, capturing all the data altimeters water altimeters uses the time delay for radar pulse to travel from the instrument to the river water and back again from estimated the water level so using the altimeters you can calculate the uh, total volume uh, and estimation of the flood flow altimeter data from 2018 to 17 was analyzed to derive the interannual and seasonal variation of water levels in major rivers of india observation during monsoon period of 2017 you can see if you see a and b indicates then flooding events in kochi and brahmaputra so you can see ki how the flooding pattern has increased over the decades in those uh, two areas and more than 2 meter rise in the water level was observed in the mid august of the current year in comparison to the last year of brahmaputra so using this sar altimeter you can see ki what are the fluctuation in the water table in the given area so you can see here one way we have marked the water table and on the other hand there are various months so you can see that ki there is a increase of 2 meters of uh, water level and the same if you want to see in a satellite image this is a sanital one data showing the flood affected regions uh, using uh, sanital the uh, one date of acquisition was 17 august 2017 so you can see that all this blue in color are the flood in indicated area so using satellite remote sensing the real understanding of the flood affected areas can be obtained using microwave data sets if in, in the same area if you would have taken a optical data the entire data would be clouded so the entire land use land cover will be what suppressed or the information will be missing because of those clouds it will be masking it so microwave data provides the real analysis ki how this all changes in the river pattern can be easily identified then morphological features of braided river during flood condition ki how the river morphology changes during or post or pre uh, flood like condition so this is a uh, three areas that we have selected before the flooding by using the radar set hs polarization of 24 7 that is the flood period time then we have taken the same satellite image radar set hs polarization of 58 2010 means near about 10 to 15 days 
later on so what you can see is there is a high water turbulence then middle sandbars main channels with less water turbulence channel flow with high water turbulence sides channel mark so all kinds of changes in the river morphology or land forms can be easily identified using the satellite remote sensing where minute details can be easily mapped and delineated using those satellite images where we'll be using the pre and post satellite images especially if you are talking about uh, uh, flood we have to take a microwave data because of all weather conditioning and we'll be taking those data to map the various changes the damage assessment the various kinds of land use land cover in that area and finally will be apply, apply, application will be done on those things and then we'll be using finally i said we will be using one model that is known as sac hydro so now we'll be reading in details how this model works so uh, as you already know about precipitation condensation transformation evaporation runoff so i'll be not going into the much detail but because to get it familiar to get a, a revision to have a, a cinetic of view view of the area it's important to visualize the your area down and again so that the real understanding and the data that is required for any investigation would be in your mind whenever you are going for any kinds of hydrological model so what kinds of data that is required for uh, this uh, analysis or modeling using that uh, sac hydro so first is satellite data until unless you don't have a satellite data you cannot perform any kind of modeling in remote sensing in gis thereafter you will be requiring it can be a microwave data or maybe optionally you can take alternatively you can take somewhere in uh, the later months of optical data so, but you need a uh, satellite images once you have taken a satellite image then you need a because you want to do a study related to a feature or analysis that is directly related to water so in india if you talk about water the water is generally concentrated during monsoon period we are getting four months of rainfall so in order to get the understanding of the rainfall in each every day or pattern or over the decade we must be requiring a precipitation data means through which we'll be getting the exact amount of rainfall in any particular so that is known as precipitation that can be obtained either through insat 3d that is a geostationary satellite or you can obtain using trmm we have already covered trmm also that is tropical rainfall measuring mission where we get the data pertaining to the precipitation thereafter the entire water volume or the entire water flow or the entire water mechanism will depend on the slope will depend on slope so in order to get the understanding of the topography relief of that area you will be requiring a distal elevation model so the distal elevation model that are free of cost and it can be easily downloaded for any of the area for any part of the world that is srtm shuttle radar topographic mission with a special resolution of 90 meters and 30 meters both are available and then you have got aster gdm that is also a, a distal elevation model with a special resolution of 30 meters you can easily go type the name create a registration in your uh, uh, using login email id and thereafter uh, you can uh, do any kind of uh, topographical analysis then you will be needing the snow cover data because uh, many time or during non monsoon periods the snow is the only source of water through which this rivers and other recharge are getting so you require modis data for snow cover mapping then for land use land cover data mapping you will be requiring a modis data 
in order to know the real understanding of the land use land cover of any area then leaf area index that is also known as lai through which we'll be identifying the exact amount of vegetation present in that area and finally we'll be doing vegetation fraction using modis data this all data are directly or indirectly will be getting from the satellite images but many times secondary data is also important for hydrological understanding so what are the other data that i'll be requiring apart from the current data sets are what is the temperature over that area what is the lst land surface temperature what is the spin wind speed then downward short wave radiations downward long wave radiations what is the humidity what is the pressure so all such data sets related to your precipitation or climatic data will be taken into consideration with the help of the various sites or the agency who provides it, such data sets like indian meteorological department provides the data pertaining to uh, river wind speed pressure temperature maybe there are various other sites of level on internet like usgs nasa where you can obtain all these data sets free of cost so we'll be taking all these data sets for your sac hydro model because for hydrological modeling you have to understand each and every component that is responsible or that can uh, help out to model such uh, water resources apart from this data sets will be requiring soil texture data what is the kind of texture of soil in that area then we'll be requiring soil hydraulic map properties soil maps then model calibration has to be performed in order to validate the results of the data so what is the methodology that will be uh, adopting for such hydrological modeling is uh, first uh, we we'll, we are going to first we are going to map the snow cover map then we are going to map the precipitation then water resource flood simulation meteorological parameters that we have already stated will be taken into consideration for mapping of this uh, discharge hydrograph so what are the parameters that we'll be taking we'll be taking this snow cover map precipitation precipitation when we have taken then we'll be uh, thresholding it we will be classifying into various ranges like from 10 to 20 degree, 20 to 30 degree, 30 to 40 degree, 40 degree and above. So when such kind of ranges uh, and when you are differentiating or you are creating a class on the basis of their range value, that operation is known as thresholding. And those thresholding will be done not only on temperature, it will be done on rainfall, it will be done on snow. So as to get a proper understanding of that area. So this data sets or this parameters will be obtained directly from precipitation from wrf simulation meteorological parameters will be uh, mapping or will be knowing and will be capturing the incoming short wave and long wave radiation then we'll be understanding the snow cover surface and air temperature with two meters above the surface and finally wind speed that is 10 meter above the surface finally cloud cover so this all data sets will be providing us the real understanding of the various meteorological parameters like temperature pressure humidity all such parameters uh, will be getting those information will be combined together with precipitation data and uh, snow cover data to provide a proper understanding of infiltration estimation ki what is the amount of water that is going to infiltrate into the ground that is also known or that will be also modeled using the green apt model apart from that we'll be using potential evapotranspiration estimation that is known as presley taylor method for potential evapotranspiration estimation that is the uh, amount we are trying to estimate the what is the partiality in that area and finally we'll be calculating the energy and mass balance over the snow cover region 
and once we have estimated all this regions and the data sets we'll be using this infiltration estimation so as to understand the basic understanding of the soil moisture in that area and from pet we will be trying to estimate the actual evapore transpiration estimation using that pre-state taylor method previously we are seeing what is the potential means what is the estimation approximation but on the second method or the second step we will be calculating the actual evapore transpiration in that area and we'll be taking this no melt depth into consideration to map the surface run of depth. So using all these parameters, whether that is related to soil moisture or actual evapore transpiration estimation or snow mold depth, we'll be calculating the surface run of depth. And finally, we'll be interacting all these layers with distal elevation model for that particular basin or for that particular watershed will be delineating it those watershed area will be performing the various drainage morphometric analysis thereafter we'll be doing the flow routing and finally we'll create a discharge hydrograph so this is the actual amount of energy balance that will be created or that has to be calculated using the snow peak heat and mass balance so what we are trying to calculate we are trying to calculate the exact amount of when will be the maximum heat and what will be the maximum amount of volume of water that will be generated using those heat and then we'll be calculating what will be the melt if this is the maximum heat what is the going to be that if this is the temperature what is going to be the melt because melt is related to the volume of water because that volume of water will be discharged and will be redistributed in various low-lying areas so we'll be estimating the soil moisture using green am amplitude infiltration model so using this model you can see the soil moisture on the area where the soil moisture is high and where the soil moisture is low so you can see that along the borders of uh, western borders of rajasthan then uh, southern border of uh, gujarat then along the uh, kerala karnataka then uh, the moisture contain is very low that is because the average soil moisture over india for a period of 26 to 30 august 2016 this is the average amount of soil moisture so using the uh, different models that we'll be using for sac hydro models this models uses potential et using prestelay taylor approach and using this you can identify and you can say about the actual evapore transpiration in that area over a period of 26 to 30 August 2016. So you can see what is the amount of precipitation, what is the amount of evaporative transpiration for throughout the India can be calculated using the following formula that will be calculated, that will be mapped in the software that will be do, doing in our laboratories. So that is the potential evapore transpiration method and actual evapore transpiration. And finally, we'll get such kind of products when we'll be performing those two exercises. So this is potential evapore transpiration model using uh, simulation results. You can see that which are the areas where you have got a high potentiality of evapore transpiration. So you can see that. Uh, um, in the western part of Rajasthan, Gujarat and uh, in southern parts of India, the maximum portion is having very uh, low uh, potentiality, means low rainfall. So you can see that using those uh, parameters or using those uh, input parameters will be creating the various uh, rainfall stimulation models where we'll be mapping our air temperature what is the air temperature of india we can see using such uh, satellite images then um, what is the wind speed 
then what is short wave down radiation what is the sunlight radiation then uh, you have got surface skin temperature what is the temperature over the various parts of the country which are the areas which are having high which are the area which are having low surface temperature then relative humidity what is the relative humidity t in the area and then long wave down radiation so all such uh, parameters can be easily obtained for uh, creation of this a uh, hydrological model so hydrological flux over india what are those so you can calculate the accumulated rainfall for 2015 in in millimeters or micrometers so what is this using this rainfall pattern this is the area which suggests that the maximum rainfall was 2500 uh, millimeters and minimum was zero so locating on your area of interest where you are located or if you have been given the entire area by understanding this rainfall pattern you can see ki which are the areas which are of prime concern and which are area which are having a sufficient amount of water so you can see which areas receive maximum amount of rainfall which area receive minimum amount of rainfall during or post or pre monsoon period then accumulated surface runoff so using the various formulas and the techniques we have calculated the surface runoff so using this you can see that the area which are having the maximum um, or minimum amount of rainfall are the areas which are having the maximum runoff so in case the areas which are not receiving rainfall and all the uh, area which they are receiving the rainfall so those kind of zonation can be seen where the different colors are indicative of various kinds of runoff in that area so you can see that in major parts of the uh, india a large amount of water is uh, went or goes and meets into the sea as runoff apart from this you can also see the soil temperature of the area so by seeing such satellite is a layman can understand and can have a real visualization and when you see all this area you can identify ki what is the problem in that area and why such problems are recurrent in particular area so not only that we'll be calculating the soil evaporation then we'll be calculating the canopy transpiration and accumulated canopy transpiration for the year 2014 thereafter we'll be calculating the snow melt runoff modeling using energy balance approach because for hydrological modeling you can see ki right now i have created or we are talking about or we are seeing that we have to create at least 20 to 30 years uh, layers of different origin of different characteristics because uh, water is a very uh, important and precious element that each and every a uh, human being is associated with so we have to look for each and every uh, parameters or factors that can directly or indirectly that can affect such modelings so using this energy balance approach we'll be trying to see the snow melt depth over the himalayan region for the period of april to july 2017 where the accumulated rain uh, snow belt is and what is the discharge so where is the maximum snow where is the minimum snow so all such components can be easily observed so using this you can see that ki what is the observed mean monthly discharge and what is the stimulated mean monthly discharge over the different basin boundaries so you can see and you can use the satellite image for analyzing the health of the snow in that area whether there is a positive change or whether there is a negative change if there is a negative change why there is a negative change if there is a positive change what is the positive change and after calculating all this will be calculating the stream flow uh, estimation in upper catchment of himalayan region using topography so using distal elevation model we will try to understand the difference in the height so using the uh srtm or astrgdm by seeing a, 
uh, distal elevation model, we can see what how the terrain is changing, how the topography is changing, which are the areas which are, ha are having the maximum height, which are the areas which are having the low heights or uh, having very low elevations. So using distal elevation model, you can understand ki how you can see the ranges, the classifications, what are the intermediate valleys, all can be easily identified using such uh, satellite images. Now using this, you can see ki which are the area of the Himalayan terrain which are receiving the highest amount of rainfall, which are the areas which are receiving the lowest amount of rainfall. Then daily average short wave over upper, uh, upper streams in the Himalayas for the period of March, April, May, June, July. So what is the temperature in that area for the month of five months can be easily calculated and can be represented using uh, various kinds of uh, satellite based measurements. So by seeing any label can understand ki what is the region or what is the current status, whether which are the region which are at a highest severity, which are the region having a lower severity can be easily represented using such uh, representative or interpolation map. Because if the same data was provided you in the form of Excel, or in the form of any tables or in the form of graph, it is very tough to understand ki what those statistics or terrain are starting about. But when you are visually visualizing those odd features using the various data sets, data bonds, you can visualize the amount of efficiency that is required, which are the area which are at a higher severity, which are the area which are at a lower severity. So on the basis of various color codes that are of a similar nature can be used to highlight the area of interest, the focus area, the zonation, which area are under the high zonation, which area are under the low zonation. And you can see that by changes in the color and their uh, lesions changes and they are indicative of the severity and the status of that area where we are going to uh, measure the daily average actual evapotranspiration. So on what we were talking about previously with the formula that will uh, we have used now the product is uh, the using that formula. This is the product. So anybody can see and can see ki which are the area which are having a high potential evaporation rates and which are the areas where there is a low potential rate. And this is the actual Evopo transpiration map. So this is the cumulative snow melt uh, depth over upper stream for the months of five months. You can see that which are the area. So you can see in the northern, western and the northern eastern, there are various features or there are various snow and a lot of area the snow melting is taking place. So we have to see why this snow melting is taking place, whether the melting pattern ranges are static or whether that is different over the different periods of month. So you can see that it has increased, the aerial coverage has increased over the years. Means the amount or maybe it is directly related to the soil moisture. Maybe the temperature is increasing that is uh, resulting in the melting of the glaciers. So using such study, you can say about the climatic condition whether the glaciers volumes are increasing, whether the temperature is increasing. So all the multi temporal data sets, the multi parameter data sets can be compiled together to create a map where you can by see by seeing the transition over the period or the over the time, you can comment about the temperature and the pressure in that area. So you can see that seasonal variability of soil moisture, okay, how the soil moisture uh, is increasing or decreasing over the period. So you can see that what was the state condition in April 15, then May, then June, July, August, September, October, November, so December. So for the entire period, you can see ki how the moisture contain has been changing for throughout the agricultural land in throughout the 
landscape of India. So by seeing such maps are representative of what is the terrain condition, what is the soil condition, what is the moisture condition. Now I'll be overlaying my area of interest and then I'll be seeing whether the moisture contain is statistic or it's different. So by seeing this, you can say that no, it's uh, dynamic, it's not static. As you can see that many times it's increasing, many times it's decreasing depending on its weather. So using such uh, maps, you can create or you can propose or you can finally produce an actual evoport transpiration map of an area that is for the month of September 2013 where what is the evopro transpiration that is being done and what is the rain where is the area where the evopore transpiration is high where is the area where evopore transpiration is the low if i am uh, situated into the northern western part of the country uh, i'll be saying my uh, actual evopore transpiration is on the lower side but if i am into the central parts if i am being located into up or Bihar, Jharkhand, um, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, West Bengal, I'll be coming up into the ranges of uh, higher actual evapore transpiration. Then you have to see why that uh, higher actual evapore transpiration rate is. Then you have to form, fight and find the various thematic layers that are uh, associated with it. Then you can in the same way, you can see the soil moisture condition, ki what is the area, which are the area which are having high soil moisture condition, which are the area which are having soil moisture condition. Now, this is the psych hydro visualization model, which uses the TRMM data to identify the, the rainfall pattern of that area over the decades. You can see that what are the snow melt depth of that area. This is the model you can select the model output and uh, the date you will be selecting the time the type of data you required and such kind of area sets will be uh, generated thereafter all this soil uh, moisture can be estimation can be done using this sac hydro model then it is the capacity for transpiration from the forest can be calculated easily and that can indicate the of the various regions which are the regions which are having high which are the area which are having row with the uh, hydrographs with the area statistics with the calculation with the trend analysis so all the not only it provides you the visualization of uh, the area but it also sees the data statistically so that you can validate the data you can validate the accuracy of the data that is generated by this sac hydro models which are calculating the various parameters that are important to understand the hydrological relationship or the hydrological status of any in any area to know about the water level to know about the water condition to see about the water budgeting so all this reward data sets or the parameters that are responsible for can be easily referred into can easily be calculated using this sac hydro model and finally we can calculate the river discharge which are the uh, discharge area which are having the maximum volume which are having the maximum value minimum value and that is calculated for the entire india so that we know ki which are the areas which are having higher discharge, which are the areas which are having lower discharge. And we can see not only visually, but we can also see statistically ki how this recharge or discharge is decreasing or increasing over the decades, over the uh, what we can see years. So all such kind of analysis can be easily performed and finally not only it's uh, important to know about your previous past what is happening in the current scenario but it's also very important to create any model that can predict the future for in order to predicting the future you need some 
simulation based models which can forecast about the various kinds of disaster and that will help out to save the amount of loss that can happen in any area if it has not been fairly announced in that area nowadays you see that in uh, ndr ndrf or nidm there or ndma they provide the various early warning system related to cyclones or disaster so what does it uh, help us it help out to save life even if uh, the you cannot uh, stop any disaster to happen but using any scientific technology the biggest advantage is that you are going to save the life and life is precious so such kind of fault forecasting help the decision makers to not only plan or save lives domestic lives human lives and uh, maybe many time property too we can provide advisory to the local people and that will help out uh, a real time information where we can produce the various kinds of hydrograph and we can state about the areas which are likely to have a flash flood so you can see if what is the condition of a flood flood uh, in 15 june 2003 and again in 19th august 2015 so you can see that how the months how the peaks are varying and such kind of statistical analyzation can be done using this trmm data so what is the future hydrological mission so it all depends on wifs are rain radar altimeter hyperspectral data microwave radio meters a hydrological constellation of satellites will be dedicated for hydrological Uh, application with instrumentation that will help you for water spread flood drought water discharge water level analysis water storage discharge then precipitation water quality snow detection snow, uh, soil moisture flood river discharge all such information can be obtained using satellite images and incoming area all are data sets related to the hydrological analysis or towards the atmospheric analysis or ocean analysis or polaric analysis will be dealt with or will be made using such satellite based data sets so this is a web application that you can uh, go to the sac application center where you download weathers and weathers you can go and you can see and about each and every location what is the date what is the time and you can see about the water logging variations of that area and various other features that are related to are easily downloadable are easily map and you can do various kinds of overlay analysis and finally you can create a map using such overlay analysis so you can uh, you after uh, reading uh, today's topic it was uh, very good to understand ke how the satellite data sets can be used for mapping of various snow melt analysis to understanding of evapore transpiration what is the potentiality what is actual what is the rainfall pattern what is the soil moisture condition so it's very important to have a visualization not only visualization it's very important to do the various kinds of statistical analysis statistical calculation to have a basic understanding of the area and finally the biggest advantage of any hydrological model is for uh, forecasting so forecasting is very important because it provides the decision support system to the administrator so that he can act on he can plan he can administer and the damage to the property and life will be at a lower side and with the increase in the technological instrumentation with the increase in the practicality or the, the advantages of the data or the new sensors that are coming up in new future and the accuracy of the maps will be increased and you will see a more precise a more accurate a more reliable data a more uh, real time analysis will be obtained and the popularity will be unlimited in nature with this i'll try to end my today's topic
today's presentation. Thereafter, we'll have uh, 10 minutes of a questionnaire, a group discussion. Thereafter, your uh, quiz in LMS, and we'll end the class. With this, I'll stop my presentation.